Welcome back to the Christian Meditation Podcast and the Recenter with Christ app. Episode 380, The Way into the Holy of Holies is Christ. A guided Christian meditation on Hebrews chapter 9 verses 2 through 8. My name is Jared and I do this podcast to help you find more peace in your life by connecting you with the true source of peace, which is Jesus Christ, and to help adjust our lives to do those things which he asks us to do. Today's meditation will be of the style Lectio Divina. I'll do several different guided sections. If you're looking for an episode that has less guidance and more silence, I invite you to check out every other episode because I switch back and forth. For now, though, find a place to sit comfortably for the next 20 minutes and when you're ready and if it's safe close your eyes in this moment our goal is to remove physical distractions that would prevent us from being able to receive the still small voice of the Lord so in this moment take a nice deep easy breath with me Allow air to come easily into your body and to carry away any stress or tension that may be there. In this moment, let go of fear and worries realizing that God is in control. We need not fear when we trust an almighty God. So in this moment, just breathe out any stresses or tensions you've been feeling, any anxieties. And embrace the inklings of the spirit of peace, which God can provide. In this moment, our hope and our goal is that we can receive the spirit of peace. So continually, so continually breathe in that calm and breathe out tension as we set our minds and set our hearts on focusing on the Lord. In this moment, we trust that God is watching out over us. He knows what we need. He knows what our hearts and our minds need also. So in these moments, we attempt to embrace the peace that only God can provide. Regardless of what is going on in our physical circumstances, we can learn to trust in the Lord. To feel that peace permeate what's going on. And then as life situations change, we can feel even more peace. But even in the midst of the storms, we can feel the peace of the Lord Today we'll be reading from the book of Hebrews chapter 9, starting with the NASB translation, beginning in verse 2, it says the following, For a tabernacle was equipped, the outer sanctuary in which the lampstand, the table, and the sacred bread. This is called the holy place. Behind the second veil, there was a tabernacle which is called the Most Holy Place, 
having a golden altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant covered on all sides with gold, in which was a golden jar holding the manna, Aaron's staff which budded, and the tablets of the covenant. And above it were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the atoning cover. But about these things we cannot speak in detail. When these things have been so prepared, the priests are continually entering the outer tabernacle, performing the divine worship. But into the second, only the high priest enters once a year, not without taking blood which he offers for himself and for the sins of the people committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit is signifying this, that the way into the holy place has not yet been disclosed, while the outer tabernacle is still standing. Continue pondering this scripture. We'll now read from the King James Version. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shewbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant, and over it the cherubim of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered himself, and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was yet standing. Continue pondering this scripture. So in Old Testament times, the temple was divided into multiple different regions. There was an outer courtyard where there were altars and sacrifices were made to the Lord. And then the actual tabernacle had two different sections. The holy place where is referred to here as the sanctuary and the innermost place called the holiest place or the holy of holies. And the inner holy of holies was entered only once per year by the high priest and only after one of these sacrifices was made, this atonement was made. And this scripture relates that process to the sacrifice of Christ. Later on in this chapter, it talks more about that in detail. And this is why I love the book of Hebrews. It connects the Old Testament sacrificial system with the sacrifice of Christ and showing how that always points to Christ. The sacrifices in the temple were meant to be a symbol of the sacrifice of Christ. And as such, Christ 
passes the first tabernacle and enters into the second tabernacle or into the holies of holies through the sacrifice of his own blood and therefore enters a new covenant with the people, enters a holy place. The reason I wanted to think about the holy place today is to reflect on what makes a place holy. What is it in particular that makes this sanctuary holy? According to the scripture, it's a meaningful sacrifice. And it refers to the presence of the Lord, which I think those ideas are deeply connected as well. The question then becomes, what sacrifice? The sacrifice that is most meaningful above all is the sacrifice or the atonement of Christ. And what is it that takes place? What is it that makes a place holy in our times now? Is it not the same thing? When we attempt to remember and acknowledge the sacrifice of Christ and worship, in our lives, it becomes holy. As we attempt to live that way, to remember Christ and live in His way, in the walls of our homes, it becomes holy. Do we live in holy places? Do we make the places around us holy by remembering the high priest, Jesus Christ, who made atonement for us all? Do we invite him into our lives and into our homes and churches and make them holy? Do we specifically ask to have our locations and our places made holy by God? Ponder on these things. Now please join me in prayer. Holy Father, as we ponder on the covenants of old and as we covenant, as we remember the tabernacles, we ask for guidance and inspiration as we attempt to discern how to apply these things in our lives. One thing that we benefit from greatly is an experience of the holy. And we know it's not things that we do particularly which make things holy, but your offering to us, the offering of your presence, the offering of your grace upon us, and the offering of your covenant. May we be ever receptive to hear it, to learn from it, to grow into it. May we ever act according to the way in which you've shown in this we say in Jesus name amen I invite you to continue in prayer now
this next moment, just sit in contemplative silence before the Lord. And now for the last little bit, I want you to ponder and remember and set new intention. So reflect on what you've learned here, what you've thought about, and then try to figure out how you're going to apply that in your life. Perhaps you realized a way in which you could make your space holy, your home holy, or your church holy. And you try to imagine living in that way now. Thank you. I now have a final question and a final thought for you. Before I do that, I want to ask if you could do one favor for me today. If you could share this podcast with someone who you think would benefit from it. This is the way that we share the love of God is by sharing things that help us find peace. You can do that through the website christianmeditationpodcast.com or more directly, the app on iOS and Android called Recenter with Christ, or as audio on any podcast player, pretty much anywhere where audio is found. So here is the final question for you to consider. What action will you take to try to bring more holiness into your life? What are you going to do to try to bring more holiness into your life? My final thought is this. I, I truly believe that it is God that makes things holy. Our human efforts are things that he asks us to do. And many times he demonstrates that with pleasure and things like that. But ultimately, it's what God chooses to do. And in olden times, he asked the people to make sacrifice. And we don't do that now. And it seems foreign to us. But that's what God asked, and the people obeyed. So now we are asked for something else. We are asked to follow Jesus Christ. We're asked to believe in him as our Savior. So may we do that. May we trust in him, and may we live our lives as though that is a true statement in our hearts, that we believe, that we trust him. So my hope is for you each and every day that this feeling will grow inside of you. That the mustard seed of faith that we begin to plant will grow stronger until we have a surety that Jesus is the Christ, that God is real, that he impacts our life on a daily basis. God does love you. He cares for you. He wants the best for you. 
And that includes a transformation of your life. May you experience such a transformation through an alignment with the will and grace of God. And this I say in Jesus' name. Amen.